Hey traders, welcome back to another video today, taking a look at the markets. I was actually out of town yesterday, uh, well this weekend, I just got back, so I apologize for the later than usual upload, but I did want to get on the camera, well, on the screen here with you guys at the very least, and talk a little bit of trading setups here into this week. Um, the S&P 500 is advancing further here today. We see gold also uh, making a move up, and notably oil, which we may get to in this video. So stick around to the very end, and if you enjoy my videos, do me a quick favor as we get started here, smash that thumbs up button. It does really help with the algorithm. Okay, so I wanted to start here with the dollar index. We're looking at the DXY. This is the US dollar currency index. <clears throat> and we're looking at it specifically on a one day time frame, meaning, of course, that each one of these represents one single day of trading action. And you can see today was a pretty mildly boring day. And I think it's something worth noting that right now we are coming into the holidays. And the holidays, of course, for those of you guys who celebrate, I hope you get some time to spend with your family and spend some time off the charts. Uh, but with that said, I do think it is important to, important to note that likely volatility will begin to really dry up here between the next few days and the end of the year. Uh, doesn't mean there won't be trading opportunities this week. I will still be trading myself if I can find a proper setup. But with the dollar index, where are we currently at? Well, it looks like we're probably most likely going to end the year with this kind of change in tone from the dollar that we've been discussing on the channel for a pretty consistent amount of time now. I think for the last few weeks, we've really been on the dollar bearish uh, side of the analysis. We've been right about that. <clears throat> and when I say we, I'm talking about not just my own analysis, but Frank and I, uh, if you don't know who Frank is, with inside of our, uh, our Discord community, Frank and I are sharing all of our trade alerts. If this is something that you'd like to sign up for, you get access to my trades, Frank's and Ivan's. There's a link down below in the description. Again, Frank, I believe is dollar yen. He's, he's been shorting dollar yen. I've been long pound dollar, which we will discuss in this video a little bit. So if you'd like to get access to our signals, the link and promo code will be down below in the description for you. But uh, that's what I mean by we, we've been pretty bearish in the dollar index. And recently what we've seen here is a nice downward trend along this downward daily trend line that we've got drawn. So far, this remains bearish in my view, unless you get some sort of break and change of tone. Now, will that happen in the new year? Possibly, maybe we get something uh, from the Fed that's suddenly a little bit more hawkish. Perhaps rate hikes get, uh, or I'm sorry, rate cuts get extended further out in the year, which has been the story for the dollar bearish thesis. Rate cuts are coming, it seems, at least from the Fed's consensus. And so for me, rallies in the dollar are mostly sell side opportunities in my personal opinion. Not only in my personal opinion, but I do also have a trade open, which was going a lot better until today and, and uh, on Friday. We saw, of course, the market kind of really retract. I entered into this trade inside of the VIP group. As I mentioned, I shared that trade alert and uh, the trade itself had been going really, really well. Uh, we initially moved into this trade here. This was a December 12th position that I took. So I've been in this for a few days and I did trail a stop loss. The red line here represents my stop loss and the blue is my entry. So my initial stop loss has been taken off the table <clears throat> and this is a risk-free trade for me. I would ideally like to see this thing recover a little bit, but uh, again, if the market moves lower, I will be taken out, sticking to the rules. So I've got a trail to stop here. If markets move higher, I will look for an opportunity to tighten up those stop loss, uh, that stop loss a little bit more. So that's pound USD. Quick look at dollar yen. I mentioned Frank took a wonderful short on this one as this thing rallied. He was able to capture the sell side and is in a wonderful short trade. Actually, I'm not sure. He might've gotten trailed out for profit. Not quite sure, but we did kind of hit short-term targets on this, 141. 67 being that area of support that we see here. Uh, I part, uh, It's in dotted white because though this is kind of a support zone, it's still in a really strong downward trend. And if this level breaks, dollar yen bulls, uh, be careful because that could slip into kind of a new leg lower on this downward trend. That's one I'm personally watching really closely. I would like to join that trade if we can. Quick look at gold here. Gold, also another move that I'm looking to be a part of if I can. Big pullback here recently, but then shot up on the idea of rate cuts, right? So rate cuts seem to be in the in the picture now. And that idea is pretty bullish for gold. So in my, well, in at least in my view, right? So I think that the rate cut story 
could come from one of two reasons, either because the Fed can cut because, you know, things are going well and inflation is coming down, which is, of course, you know, uh, meaning like they, they can have they can eat their cake and have it too kind of thing. Inflation comes down, the economy doesn't get destroyed. That's still pretty decently bullish for gold, in my view, because the dollar is likely to weaken in that scenario. But the other scenario is even more bullish for gold. What if they rate cut because they have to, because the economy starts really slowing down? We start to see the fears around a recession rise. Well, gold's probably going to scream higher in that scenario, in my personal view, because again, people will start to flock to gold as a safe haven, which is oftentimes what gets us to scream higher uh, in, in the gold market. So I personally will be looking for pullback opportunities if I can find it around the 2000 level. I may take that as a chance to move into gold. If I take that trade, like I said, it will be shared inside of the Discord group. I also want to talk a little bit about the smart money tracker, the COT data that we have here, and take a quick look. I recap this a little bit in my Sunday video. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to check this out for yourself. But I'm taking a look here and we can see that pound was a big buy in the last week from institutional money. Kiwi also, US 30. So we might take a look at some indices in a moment. JPY actually was as well, which is it's very surprising. This hasn't been so bullish in a long, long time. And it actually encourages my, my dollar yen bearish thesis. In fact, it really does when you see that the dollar was also sold heavy by institutional money. So you combine these two things and I actually really like that story for possible dollar yen shorts. Well, I'll Keep an eye on that one. And if I take that trade again, you'll see it inside of our Discord. Um, oil also pretty bearish. Silver pretty, uh, pretty bearish. Uh, dollar uh, Nikkei. Uh, the gold market seeing a little bit of bearishness. That's a little concerning. But overall, again, I think that dollar story is really leading. Look at that. It's big sell on the dollar. And uh, again, we can see the net positioning. So this is why I often point towards this net positioning, which is available on our website for free. Just head over to a1trading.com. You can get this portion for free. But in my personal opinion, this portion is good for like long-term investing and maybe you know buy and hold kind of ideas. Uh, but if you're more of a trader, this secondary column uh, set of columns is really the the action-packed stuff because it shows you the week-to-week -week change. Again, you'd see if you only looked at this, you'd be like, oh, big bullish position on the dollar. But but remember that might be changing. This might be moving in this direction, right? You want to consider which direction are these things moving. In order to get that access, you have to really use the the money flow columns that we've built here. This net change column gives you an overall idea of what institutional money uh, has been doing the latest filing. So if you want more information about that, if you'd like access to the Edge Finder, the link to that will be down below in the description. Again, there's that promo code that you can use if you are interested in getting a copy. So if we go back to the charts here for a second, uh, a quick look at the S&P 500. I am still in this trade. There has been no sign of stopping this rally. And uh, as long as this continues to go, I will stay in my positions. They have become a quite large uh, winning trade for me. Um, I've been saying this consistently. Please do not, you know, take this as like my regular, oh, just another trade. This is an exceptionally, um, you know, good runner for me. And I took several losses before that scenario. Why do I keep saying that? If you're somebody who knows my channel, if you've watched my channel for a while, you might be like, Nick, you don't have to keep saying that. Yeah, I get it, but I'm trying to say that for somebody who wanders into the video for the first time, um, I really, I try and um, stay away from the ideas of, you know, the social media hype where it's like people only ever show their good positions. This is a trade that has been exceptionally uh, good for me. I bought this at the start, the onset of November based on seasonality and also a lower time frame breakout of this downward trend. I put my initial stop loss just around the lows and the market has just rallied and I have trailed my stop several times along the way to get to this point. Now I mentioned seasonality just then. What the heck does that mean? <clears throat> well, if you haven't used seasonality before, it's a really cool indicator. Very, very simple concept. It's the study historically of how per certain assets or certain uh, instruments tend to trade during different parts of the year. So exa for example, I bought November, uh, the S&P 500, because historically in the last 10 years, it's been very, very strong during this portion of the year. Same with December, which is why I'm still holding. Now, again, as we go into the new year, the last 10 years have been pretty flat, so we'll see how that goes. But the point is, I like this seasonal uh, 
little bit of extra confirmation in my trading. I combine that with the rest of things. You can still see S&P, NAS, US 30, the algorithm has computed all of these different factors here and give us an, given us an overall pretty bullish reading for indices the last month or so. It's been a wonderful trade. And again, this is what I look for in the edge finder to capture the trades that I do. Um, sure, I'm not always right, but I wait for that edge finder confirmation and then I find the technical trade setup that makes sense, and that's how I trade. Edge Finder allows me to look at both fundamentals while I can consider the technicals on my own. I think most people can relate to that. Most people are able to get the technical side pretty quick. Technical analysis, in my personal opinion, the simpler the better. And once you get a basic understanding of how it works, you don't have to overcomplicate it. A lot of traders love to really just you know, make technical analysis some sort of science lab. And in my personal opinion, the simpler, the better, right? We, I use simple zones of support and resistance. I trail stops, I use market structure, but really the predominant directional bias comes from the edge finder and my understanding of fundamentals. Again, if you'd like a copy of the tool, the link will be down below in the description uh, and you can find out more there. NASDAQ even stronger here today up 0.75%. The Dow moving as well, very, very strong. These things look unstoppable right now. Sure, something will come along, will cause a big pullback, but for now, they look really strong. They look really healthy. I'm staying bullish until proven otherwise. Um, we'll move on from indices here. We'll take a look at oil. I mentioned this. Oil still seems to be in an overall downward trend. I think it's probably a fair assumption that the economy will likely... Um, you know, it's been slowing. Now, the rate cuts, depending on how fast they come, could change that. Uh, but for now, I still think the consensus is uh, bearish, though I'm very cautious about this. I, I want to take a look and see. The edge finder does not quite give it a bearish reading anymore. And I am kind of neutral in some ways because of the idea that, okay, rate cuts are going to cause potential economic stimulus. And economic stimulus could increase the demand for oil. So although this chart looks bearish, and in my personal opinion, there's still bearish momentum here, I'm going to not take any trades on this one. And again, that is because, again, the, the, the environment seems to be changing, rate cuts seem to be coming. And with that kind of buy the rumor, sell the news effect, I think that the, the trade here could be run, could have run most of its course. We'll see if I'm right about that. But again, there's factors here that could swing this in the other direction. And in fact, from a more, you know, swing trade side of things, if we do start to see rate cuts and the economy stays strong, uh, demand could stay very good for oil and perhaps we even see a switch into the bullish camp. But again, for now, somewhat neutral on the oil market. Hope this update was helpful to you guys. Again, if you would like to join our Discord or get access to the Edge Finder, the links will be down below in the description. Also, one thing I will say, if you made it to the end of the video and you're wondering, hey, how are you trading indices directly on tradingview.com as a US trader? I trade with ETFs. They're very simple to trade. It's basically like buying or selling a stock and I can do it through Webull. There's a link down below in the description, by the way. If you are a US person, or I believe like the Philippines, Singapore, UK, there's a couple countries that allow uh, members or, or um, users from those countries to join Webull. If that's something you're interested in joining, there will be a link down below in the description to use my referral link. If you do that, you'll be supporting my channel, but also if you use that link, you'll also get some free shares when you sign up. So definitely worth checking out. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.